A warm welcome to a VTU e Sikshana e Learning Center. We will continue the previous class, module number 3 of Artificial Neural Network. An amazing trick to reinforce the trick as we considered in the previous video, we are going to discuss about an one more example by considering the following maps into a two variables. One is going to be taken into an x is equal to x1 comma x2 of transpose. Here the input space is going to be an r square and the future space is going to be taken into r to the power of 6 where choosing an example in such a way that pi of x is equal to 1 comma root of 2 x1 comma root of 2 x2 comma x1 square plus x2 square into root of 2 x1 x2. So, which is going to map a value of k of x y is equal to pi of x into pi of y that is equal to 1 plus x, plus x dot y to the power of square 2. This is going to be a straightforward to the particular expression which is going to verify. Since these ideas are going to be extendable to the m dimensional case in the straightforward fashion. We are going to consider an example choosing a i is equal to m l. So, which is going to yield the value of x of pi of x into pi of y as I said already by mapping the value of k comma y into the kernel function which is going to yield the value of pi of x dot pi of y which is going to provide the summation of this particular value which is going to be deals about when l is equal to 0 to m we are going to have the value which is going to deals about the value of 1 plus x y to the power of m which is going to deals about the particular expression then it is going to specify that the kernel function which is going to deals about the function of k kernel function of k of x comma y when it is going to yield about the value of 1 plus x into y to the power of square which is going to deal the same value. So, this idea which is going to evaluate the kernel function which is going to evaluate which is equals to the inner product of this particular computational simple. So, that these ideas are extendable to the m dimensional cases in the straightforward fashion. So, the essential points is that the inner product between the high dimensional feature, high dimensional feature space vectors are now computed through the kernel functions, kernel evaluation functions in the input space between the vector x and the support vector x i. That is why it is going to be called as an amazing trick of this particular example. Let me continue with an another example which is going to deal support x is equal to x1 comma x2 transpose the input space is going to be r2 and the feature space is going to be r6 as I special as I mentioned the initial. So, we are going to take the particular parameter of x of pi of x is equal to 1 comma root 2 x1 comma root 2 x2 of x1 x1 square x2 square and root 2 of x1 x2. So, that what happened this maps the admit and the kernel function which is going to make that k of x comma y is equal to pi of x into pi of y which is going to be deals about 1 plus x y to the power of 2. So, the stride forward which yields to verify the particular expression since pi of x into pi of y we are going to substitute the values and we are going to get it is going to be equal to that of k of x comma y k of x comma y which is going to be straight away deals about the straight forward kernel function straight forward kernel function. This essential point is that the inner product between the high definition high dimensional uh, feature spaces vectors are now computed into a kernel evaluation in the input space between the x of the particular vector and the 
support vector of x i such a way we are going to map it over here understand move on to the next topic a non linear svm discriminate with the polynomial kernel function how it is going to discriminate with the polynomial kernel functions just we are going to return to the support vector machine using a kernel function to present the inner product results in d of x is equal to sin of summation of the support vectors with d i lambda i in the kernel function k of x comma k i plus the weight matrix. So, the above equation this equation now represents a non-linear function in the input space which is generated by a linear superposition of this particular support vectors n s which is going to provide a linear support vectors of non-zero lag range multipliers corresponding to the support vector corresponding to the support vector. So, there is one last question which needs to be addressed before going ahead to the MATLAB example. So, which is going to be the particular function which is going to be deals about this which is going to be called as Mercer conditions. Let me see about the Mercer condition for which the kernel does there exist a mapping of pi into a i dimensional space h usually which is going to be uh, referred as Hilbert space, Hilbert space that is going to be the main thing. So, there exists a mapping of pi and an expression of a symmetric kernel function which can be addresses the particular Hilbert function. Let me see about the Hilbert function then Hilbert space then we can move on to that one. So, the answer lies in Mercer's condition which states that there exists a mapping of pi of x and an expansion of this symmetric kernel function. So, here the Hilbert function, the Hilbert space which is going to be generalized of a familiar Edelian space which has an inner product defined and which is complete, uh, complete with respect to the corresponding norms which corresponding norm may be as classified as the kernel function k of x comma y is equal to summation of pi of i of x pi of i of y. If the double integration of k of x comma y into g of x into g of y dx of dy is going to be greater than or equal to 0 such that we are going to take the value as integration of g square of x dx is going to be lesser than that of the infinite value. So, when it is going to be lesser than that of the infinite value obviously, this Mercer condition is going to be get satisfied over there in such a way it is going to be get present over there. So, this continuation provides the inner product kernel for this particular thing. This is certain well known classes of approximating the functions with the polynomial functions that their inner product kernels which satisfies the Mercer condition. So, we present three of them are here which is going to be called as polynomial discriminant functions that is going to be called as d of x is equal to sin of i is equal to 1 to n s support, uh, so support vectors d i x i k of x i comma x comma x i plus weight matrix the inner product kernels the polynomial of degree m as we have seen as a major inner product kernel that is going to be k is equal to sorry k of y comma so x comma y is equal to 1 plus k dot y to the power of m that is going to be the polynomial degree as which have been seen over this is the first one which admits the kernel function. Coming to the next one second one radial basis indicator function of the particular form which can be taken off y of x is equal to sin of i is equal to 1 to m into alpha i exponential to the power of x minus x i square by sigma square with the center x and a common spreads which admits the inner product kernel over here and 
by admitting the kernel function for this particular thing we are going to get it k of x comma y is equal to exponential of the particular minus of x comma y modulus square by sigma square. This is going to be the second one. The third inner product kernel third which is going to provide a neural network indicator function of this particular form. So, this neural network function which is going to deals about this y of x is equal to sin of summation i is equal to 1 to m of alpha i tan h a x dot w weight matrix plus b plus w naught. So, here with the weight matrix w, w naught and constant a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1. We are going to assume that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1 with the weight matrix of w and w naught. While choosing this to satisfy the Mercer's condition, which admits the inner power, inner product kernel as k of x comma y is equal to tan h into a of x dot y plus b. So, which is having covered the support vector machine in detail. We know we are going to summarize this particular operational aspects with the help of a MATLAB code. Let me see about an operational summary of this support vector machine learning algorithm, support vector machine learning algorithm. When we are going to take, um, take, uh, take about this particular summary, a given data if you are going to see about the training set comprise, compromise the vectors of x of k is a subset of this relevance and the desired output vectors are going to be a subset between minus 1 to plus 1. And we are going to initialize by choosing a kernel function k, kernel function k. And we need to set the essence matrix value which is going to be deals about that h of i j is equal to d i d j of k of x i into x j. And we need to set the value for c, we have to set the value for c. Once we are going to do this one, we are going to get for the next one, we have to go for the maximize. What is the maximize value have been set over there? The constraints have been observed. What is the constraint? It must be 0, it should be lesser than or equal to 0 and it should be greater than or equal to C1. Using this any quadratic program or optimizer, we have to optimize the Lagrange multipliers. That is going to be the initialization value which is going to be subject to the constraints we have to do that one. And coming to the predict classes, we have to predict it, is not it? Given any test inputs of the particular value x can set the classes. So, we are going to take one uh, expression x of y is equal to sin of summation i is equal to 1 to sub uh, vector values of n s which is going to have a value of that. So, such a way we are going to make the summary, operational summary for this support vector machine learning algorithm. So, this is the way, this is the way it is going to do the function in such a way. Coming to this computation, how we are going to compute it with that one. The SVM computations portrayed as a feed forward neural network, feed forward neural network. To cement our understanding further, this figure which is going to be portrays the SVM operation in the form of a network architecture which makes it if look similar in operation to a neural network process. So, this is going to be a neural network process which is going to be portrayed over here. If you are going to see about that one, x1 fits for this one where kernel function of x comma x1 heals a value of w weight, w1 weight and x1 heals a value of k comma x comma x2 weight w and so on we are going to make a value of n tuck. It is going to provide a m values. So, it is going to provide a different weights that is going to get summation of that one providing an output. Here we are going to apply the test vector values as x and support vectors are going to be provided x1, x2, x3 like that. 
and the kernel functions are going to get provided over there k of x comma 1, k of x comma 2, k of x comma 3, k of x m s like that. And finally, the weights are going to be product of a lagger values, lagger range values, lagger range multiplier values and decided values are going to be get present over here which is going to be get summed over here. So, this SVM computation portrait as a feed forward network with nodes that performs a kernel evaluation and optimal lag range multiplier decided value product as a weights for this particular outcome. Let me discuss simulate with the MATLAB code. So, the MATLAB code that implements the Hessian computations for this nonlinear support vector machine. We now move on to describe about this MATLAB code for a nonlinear support vector machine, after which we will take a look at the couple of examples also as we have seen for the previous one. So, here the only difference between the case of this linear SVM with a non-separable data and the non-linear SVM is in the essence computation. Everything remains unchanged, the code SNP net for this essence computation is going to be shown okay, in the next slides. Here the code has been set up for a polynomial kernel of order ORD. Let me see about this particular thing. Okay. So, the code, all codes are same as for linear SVM, non-linear data set as already I specified to you that. The code snip net shown for the polynomial kernel is going to be get present over here. Okay. And I am going to say that order, I am going to specify the order of polynomial kernel as 2, ORD 2. And I am going to initialize the essence matrix H is equal to 0, Q comma Q. And I am going to set up the essence function for i is equal to 1 is, C, 1 is to q, for j is equal to 1 is to q. And I am going to calculate the essence function matrix h of i comma j is equal to d of i into d of j into i of i plus and x of j plus plus 1 to the power of the particular order and I am going to end the function very simple program, okay. very simple codes are going to get present over there. I am going to specify the or initialize the polynomial kernel order. Next, I am going to initialize the Hessens function matrix and setting up the function and I am going to convey what actually the function is going to does over here and I am going to exit. I am going to end the code. Such a way the simple MATLAB code is going to be get present over here. So, here if you are going to see about this, this XOR simulations which is going to show in this particular way. We know we can take a look at a couple of interesting simulation examples as I have shown over here considering again the XOR classification problem. Already I hope that you people are aware about the XOR operation. So, 0, 0 is equal to what? 0, 1 is equal to what? 1, 0 is equal to what? 1, 1 is equal to what? Okay. 0 x r 0, 0 x r 1, 1 x r 0, 1 x r 1. So, uh, the same thing I am going to take over here, the 4 patterns of indication classes I am going to take and wish to separate these points into their classes using a non-linear support vector machine. So, it is going to provide an example for me. Okay. So, let me see before going to see about that, but let me see about this 4 pattern which is denoted by rectangles plus 1 and stars as minus 1. So, rectangles plus 1 and dot minus 1 is going to be present over. With this polynomial separating boundaries, the margin against a shaded background that dissipates the values of the non-linear polynomial for surface. The white spaces for positive very large and black for negative very large. Okay. So, white spaces are going to be for the very large no, positive values and dark places are going to be taken for very large negative values. Such a way I am going to make it over you. Okay. Once again, the margin boundaries are essentially counters of the interactions or intersections of this nonlinear surface and the signum indicator function which have been shown over there with this particular figure. The intersection of the signum indicators functions and nonlinear polynomial surfaces have been 
shown over there. You can see about this particular figure over here. Okay, two diagrams I have shown. One is going to make the mag margins and class separation boundaries, which is going to be shown over here, and this is going to be intersection of signal indicators, which have been shown over here. Understand? So one can note that the margin and the curved nonlinear boundary formed by this intersection also going to consist of a four data points chosen as support vectors. There are three unbounded and one is going to be bounded. So, that we used C is equal to 3. Okay? So, three are going to be bounded, one is unbounded. I am going to take another color to specify it. This is unbounded, this is unbounded. All the blue are bounded we are bounded over here, such a way it is going to get present over there, understand. So, move on to this data point XR simulation data points. So, as I specified the data specification for this XR classification problems with the Lagrange multiple values after optimization, we are going to get the four values as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, which uses second order polynomial kernel. So, that we are going to take that XI comma x j plus 1 to the power of 2. This corresponds to an order value O R D. Already in the MATLAB I have specified O R D is equal to 2 that is order 2 in the MATLAB program. The polynomial order is going to be 2 which have been specified over. So, that I am going to take 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 1. So, the class which is specifies as minus 1 minus 1 for both the values are going to be common and the class is going to be plus 1 for both values are differ. So here all the four are going to be coming under a bounded one and which is going to have a values over there. If I am going to see about this, the value which is going to be lies between 1 to 2 are going to be unbounded and 3 is going to be called as bounded. We choose a second order so that it is going to be looks like this. Okay? This is going to be a data specification for the XR classification problem. Understand? And coming to the second example. When we are going to take our second example concerns two class data set deals with the previous section. The two class data status was used on two nonlinear support vector classifiers. One with c is equal to 10, one with c is equal to 10 with stressing on the large margin with, with scat, uh, sacrificing the classification accuracy and one more is going to be c is equal to 150, c is equal to 150 which stressing on high classification accuracy at the cost of low margin, at the cost of low margin. Okay? So, the results are shown in this particular figure. See that, when you are going to see about the c is equal to 10 which stressing a magni margin sacrificer classification accuracy, we are going to get this representation like this. And we are going to make C is equal to 150 with a small margin with high classification accuracy, we are going to get the data in a different way. Understand? So, the class separates boundary solid lines margins, we are going to see about this, the class which is going to separate the boundary in the solid line, the solid line and the margin which is going to be present a dotted lines for a polynomial SVM classifier C is equal to 10 like this. And if you can see about this, a class separation boundary, a solid line, a solid line we are going to present over here. Now, if you are going to see about this, the solid line you can see like this. In between this you can see that, the solid line which is going to be present over here and the dotted lines for the polynomial SVM classifier C is equal to 150 has been shown like this. Understand? And coming to this, the value which have been shown over there. So, the intersection of the signum indicator function and polynomial surface C is equal to 10 has been shown like this and for 150 it has been shown like this. Got it? So, I hope that you people understand this clarity. So, the three dimensional plot showing the intersection of the polynomial surface with the signum indicator are shown how actually it is going to be get separate this levels respectively this figure c is equal to 10 
and C is equal to 150. Understand? Let us move on to the next topic with this data points. So, the Lagrange multiplied data for both the cases is going to be tabulated. So, C is equal to 10. When C is equal to 10, the data if you are going to see about that the average the relative large margin uh, large margin of 0.6 and low classifying accuracy of the training data set has been shown over here. So, see the relativity which is going to get present over there which is going to have minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, here 2 are going to be non supported and 2 are so 4 are going to be unbounded only 2 are going to be bounded the plus value which is going to be get bounded over here for c is equal to 100. So, for c is equal to 10 for c is equal to 150 the value which is going to be shown over is nothing but changes are going to be get observed over there okay, so let us see minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Here the same thing is going to be found over here as first is unsupported second one is going to be unbounded third again it is a bounded one fourth and fifth are unbounded fifth and sixth together it is going to be and non supported and final is going to be unbounded this is the value which i have been shown for the c is equal to 150 understand so with the help of this we have come to know about that the nonlinear separable data scattered simulations how it is going to be looks into this particular data points. Let me continue with the next topic support vector machines for regression. The outer the output which is going to be present from this support vector machine is going to be dealt for this particular thing. So, interestingly the support vector machines have also found applications the domain of a function approximation or regression. The essential difference between the classifications and regressions problem is in the nature of the desired outputs. For classification problems, the outputs are restricted to minus 1 to plus 1. We are going to restrict that one. Okay. So, in the regression, the output can take one real value and thus the training data now take on the form of Q pairs. Okay. So, t is equal to x of k comma d of k to the power of q where k is equal to 1 where x of k is nothing but subset of subset of this r. We want to find out the approximate approximating function that models the functional dependencies of d on x where the sample d are drawn from the probability distribution rather than being deterministic. So, that the support vector which is going to find the function that models the dependencies of d on x d on x in a problemistic prob prob probabilistic sense. So, that the support vector function regression approximate functions of this form is going to be termed as f of x comma w is equal to summation of high definitional feature vector is going to be incorporated over here see the weight transfers into pi of x that is going to be high definitional feature vector value is going to be get incorporated before pi of x is equal to pi of x comma pi of pi of 1 x comma pi of 2 x comma pi of m x to the transpose is the high definitional feature vector that is going to be imposed into that to find the support vector machines regression approximate function approximate function. Okay. So, with the help of that we are going to measure the approximation error. In the regression one requires a measure of the approximation error that is going to be most important. This will employed in the place of a margin measure for the optimal separating hyperplane to the uh, support vector machine classifier. So, earlier what we will do we used to find a quadratic loss function while training a feed forward neural network which we know is approximately or appropriate one uh, only if the noise is the training sample is going to be a Gaussian. For example, uh, uh, SVM uh, the support vector machine regression 
So, uh, Vapnik introduced a more general error function which is going to be called as E insensitive loss function definitely which is going to be providing a uh, portrayed uh, information for us a function which is going to be defined by this particular thing which is going to be called as an insensitive loss function epsilon. So, the insensitive loss function which is going to taken into a terms of 0 if d is equal to f, d minus f of x comma w or d minus f of x comma w is going to be is going to be minus of this particular set otherwise it is going to be present like that. So, that what happen there is no loss if error range is going to be provided within the plus or minus epsilon value as well no loss equal to the linear equation when it is going to be minus epsilon if the error is greater than that of plus or minus epsilon. Such a way we are going to measure the approximation error with the help of this insensitive loss function. Let me see about the insensitive loss function how it is going to be. We are going to portray this insensitive loss function in a diagrammatic way. This figure shows a zoomed up plot of a single point and explains how it maps to a error using the insensitive loss function using the insensitive loss function ok. So, if you are going to see about this it is a visualization of this e, uh, insensitive loss function where the data value which is going to be get present over there in between minus to plus and this is going to be portrayed into the value the loss associated within this data points are going to be calculated. So, we are going to portray this two distance levels where this value is going to get present from that we are going to derive an expression that is going to provide a value data path. So, this data path value which is going to provide a loss associated with the data point p there we are going to measure this loss function understand. Coming to this minimization problem notice that for errors in the prediction which is going to be less than epsilon there is no penalty and for errors beyond epsilon the loss is equal to that of the absolute linear loss which is going to be less than epsilon. So, that we must observe or we must assume that the imperial risk about this particular function. So, that assuming the imperial risk we are going to take the function imperial risk of function is equal to 1 over q summation q is equal to 1 to q of this particular function which is to be minimized when the sub uh, constraints are going to be subjected and that is going to be taken into action. So, that what happened we introduce the two set of slack variables one is going to be the value of actual and value of intersect for each of this q input of this particular pattern. So, that the cost function which is going to be get carried over here. So, in order to formulate an appropriate cost functional we introduce this two set of non negative slag variables for each data point in t we can call them as epsilon i comma epsilon dash i where i is equal to 1 to q this will help quantifying the total error over the training set since the cost is going to be the difference between the prediction error and the value of epsilon. So, we want the epsilon 1 and epsilon 1 dash to be quantified by the error. So, that we define the value which is going to be defines over there in between this particular parameters where i is equal to 1 to q. Note that this epsilon i or epsilon i dash are both positive and measures error above and below the predicted function for each data points. So, that the imperial risk minimization problem is going to be then equivalent to that of the minimizing function subject to the above constraints ok functions to this above constraints. Hence, this imperial risk minimization can be we formulate the lag ranging in the primal variable as this particular function of 
modulus of W weight matrix square over plus C of summation of sigma i and summation of sigma i dash. So, which is going to leads the particular value in the primal variable. Let me see how this primal variable which is going to be present. So, C is going to be specified parameter that assigns greater or lesser penalty to the error. As we have done before, we formulate this Lagrangian in the primal variable which is going to be specified with the values of this particular value. We are going to take this expression as like this. So, this is going to provide a primal variable a Lagrangian's expression which deals to the saddle point behavior. How the saddle point behavior which is going to be get dealt? So, once again at the saddle point, a partial derivative is with respect to the primal variable vanishes and forms the previous equations into such equation. So, we are going to have the expression finally it is going to be derived like this. Here we are going to take the two values of gamma i is equal to c minus lambda i, gamma dash is equal to c minus lambda dash. So, these two are going to be the parameter which is going to deals about the saddle point behavior, which is going to provide a continuation for us to simplify the dual form. So, we will substitute from this previous equation to get the simplified dual form LD the final simplification comes from the Mercer theorem which permits us to rewrite the inner product pi transpose of x into pi of x i in terms of the kernel function k of x i comma x j. This permits the dual function to be written out as this expression. Understand? So, which is going to deal about the simplified dual function. So, which can be rewritten into a dual Lagrangian in the vector form also. How that is going to be there? We can now write out the dual Lagrangian in the vector form. The optimization problem is now 1 of maximization of the Lagrange multipliers a comma a dash which is going to be stated as follows as maximize. So, which is going to deal about this expression. Subject to the constraints, what are the constraints are going to be present over there? We can make use of that one into summation of i is equal to 1 to q of this lambda i minus lambda i dash is equal to 0. We can make this expressions as into simple. So, where c is a user specified constant and where we have defined for convenience of implementation so that the kernel function x i comma x j is going to be into the Hessian matrix and the d value can be present d is equal to d 1 comma d 2 comma d q of transfers. So, that i may be is equal to i comma i 1 comma i 2 comma i 2 comma i n to the power of transpose. Such a way with the Lagrange optimization done we can observe that the data points for which lambda i or lambda i dash is not 0 are the support vectors. Also note that since each one of this lambda i or lambda i dash is 0, the product of lambda i comma lambda i dash is equal to 0. Finally, we can have the optimal weight vector has the support vector value can be optimized weight vector value is going to be present like this. Summation k is equal to 1 to support vector values is going to be a value of this where n is the number of support vector and index of k index of k runs over the support vectors only. Once again to compute the bios we average overall support vectors which have an interpolation error of exactly epsilon. That is those who lies on the particular E tube. 
So, with the help of that we can compute the optimal bios. Let us work through this, we invoke the complementary again. First observe from the above equation, the previous equation what you come across over there that for a support vector with lambda i is going to be greater than 0. So, the following condition is going to be get hold exactly about the particular expression which is going to deals about this particular function. So, which invoke the complementary as w naught is equal to d i minus w transpose of x pi of x i minus sin beta i. So, the above equation is going to be modified slightly or in case of lambda i is going to be lesser than or greater than or 0 in such case this value is going to be get change into this. So, that we can notify the optimal bias can be easily computed from the above equation by substituting for this optimal weight vector and averaging the overall unbounded support vector as before. So, that let me wind up the discussion about this optimization of this optimal decision with a MATLAB simulation. Okay. Let me see about the MATLAB simulation. So, let me see the MATLAB simulation how it is going to get present over there. This is going to be the simulation plots which have been present over there. So, the first simulation we are going to see about that. You might have noticed that the code would be almost identical that of the SVM classified codes already what we have seen for the previous things. With the minor change of this vector of A needs to be introduced and then the calculation of this essence no longer requires the desired value to be get multiplied into the kernel function. So, the rest of the code is going to be straightforward implementation of the equation which is going to be presented in the previous video. So, that our present data is going to be drawn from a noisy hyperbolic tangent function and we work through the simulation in three stages. The first stage case we consider approximating the 10 data points with a third order nonlinear polynomial kernel choosing a value epsilon is equal to 0 0.005 is going to be 0 0.005 and c value is equal to 10. So, we obtain rather a decent approximation which is going to be present as nonlinear SVM regression of noisy hyperbolic tangent data during the third order polynomial kernel with the value of epsilon is equal to 0 0.005 and c is equal to 10. So, which is going to be looks like this, the diagram is going to be looks like this. The interesting the order of this polynomial is going to be 8. Let us see about the second one, when I am going to look into this 8, c is equal to 0 0.00005 and c is equal to 10 which yields approximation of this figure. Obviously, there is too much of complexity in this later function for a good generalization. So, which shows the nonlinear SVM regression for noisy hyperbolic tangent data using the third order, third order polynomial kernel with the value epsilon is equal to 0 0.00005 where c is equal to 10 understand and coming to the final one the third one which consisting of order of 8 as we have seen about that one. A data point 3 to show the low margin and data point on the boundary of this particular tube which is going to be a zoomed version a zoomed plot into a data point 3 shown the fine margin, fine margin and the data point as a support vector with a value which have been shown over here that is going to be the zoom plot. So, this are the three different vectors which have been seen over here, understand. So, the first one which deals about the regression on noisy hyperbolic tangent data scattered the data which is going to be consisting of a third order polynomial kernel c is equal to 0 0.05 with the value of c is equal to 10. This it shows the 
path like this and a regression no noise hyperbolic tangent data scatter with 8th order polynomial kernel, 8th order polynomial kernel, the value is equal to 0 0.00005 and c is equal to 10 which is going to be shown yeah, drastic change which can observe the drastic changes over here. It is too much of complexity in this later function for a good generalization which I have been shown over here. And with the help of data point 3, we have shown a low margin data with 8th order polynomial data, but shows the fine margin, a zoomed plot of this fine margin with the support vectors, which is going to be shown like this. Understand? Hope that this is going to be very much useful for you to understand about this particular super vector, uh, support vector data simulation with this 3 different characteristics. I will wind up this video over here and will continue the next topic in the further videos. Thank you. Thank you for watching.